Hello everybody, my name is Anthony, but what is somebody else in ring? Today I will be doing an, another album ranking from one of my favorite members of the Beatles, Paul McCartney. And his album is going to be Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. This is the album that I've always loved, even though when I first got it I was like, mm, it's okay, but I loved it still. <laughs> but yeah, I just listened to this album just recently, I just listened to this album. And Two songs I switched around for my least favorites, and that's pretty much it. And sorry if it looks kind of different. I try to move the camera in different places. It's still in my, it's still in the same room, but I switch into different places so it can be a little brighter. And announcements that I will be re-uploading that video, the Paul McCartney's Chaos and Creation in the Backyard album review, because it was, because in that video it had copyrights. And I will re I will re upload that video after I done making my um, album ranking video. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the album ranking, shall we? And yes, this is Paul McCartney's Chaos Equation in the backyard, ranking it worst to best. Like I always say, it's least to favor because there's no bad songs. I mean, there's some songs from other older Paul McCartney songs that I don't like, or especially his newer ones that I don't like either. But it's not on this album, so yeah, um, yeah. There's no for me. There's no bad songs in this album. There's no bad songs on this album. I love this album. One of my it's actually one of my favorite Paul McCartney albums he's ever released and made. Especially, did you guys and girls know that this is an album that he actually played all the instruments, almost all the instruments in this album, similar to. Give my regards to Broadstream, released in 1984, where he was not involved in producing this album. I think this album was produced by Nigel. Oh, I forgot his last name. Nigel Cardridge. Can't pronounce his last name. It was produced by Nigel Cardridge. Cardridge. And yeah, all the songs are written and composed by Paul McCartney. So let's get into the album ranking. So there's 13 tracks on this album. So there's 13 of them. It's not that bad. So number 13 for me, my least favorite song on this album is for me. It's you may rank this a little like probably in the middle or at the top, but this is my least favorite for now. And it's too much rain. This song, I I actually like this song more than I do. I actually like this song now more than I like the song back then. Cause when I when I listened to the song back then, I it didn't really grow on me. It, it wasn't my favorite song on the album. The, and the next song that is my least favorite too. That song, this song didn't really, this song didn't really took, um, or this song, it didn't really took um, that long to remember how the song goes. It's kind of slow, but it's not really my favorite. Like I said, there's no problems with slow songs. And. This is this album, by the way. Fun fact: This is this is um, Paul McCartney plays all the instruments, similar to McCartney McCartney Two albums, where he almost played all the instruments in the albums. Um, I love his '70s albums, but the McCartney Two I didn't get much listens from that album because of how much I didn't really like him. And it's probably one of my first albums I've ever I've ever ne that I actually never want to listen to that album because because of him wanting to be experimental and. He wanted to make, because especially because he's from the rock band The Beatles, and I feel like some of the songs I liked it, but I, I, in my opinion, it's a little too poppy for me. A little too poppy. I'm sorry, Paul McCartney fans out there, but I don't hate it. But I don't hate it. I I can say I like it because it's pretty catchy, but it's not my favorites. His '80s is what it it flew out of the radar, but he got better in the late '90s. He got better in the late '90s after the Beatles anthology and he learns his mistakes over the 80s so yeah too much rain wasn't my favorite song in the album it's not my favorite song nor maybe never in the future it depends on my taste it depends on your taste so yeah this song is my least favorite this is so number 12 for me is this never happened before or wait actually it's called yeah this never happened before this is the song that Took me a long time to know how it goes, even for because I think I listen to this album already now. I listen to it ten times because of how much I love this album. 
but it for for four and five listens. It took it took me a long. It ne I never know how this never happened before. I know how it goes a little, but I don't remember the whole thing. But now I do. And yeah, this is another song that's. This is actually the song that took me a lot of listens to know how it goes. But too much rain didn't really took too much listens for that to know how the song goes. Too much rain is too much rain. It's a good song. I kind of prefer that song a little more than this never happened. I actually, this never happened before. I actually like the song a little more than Too Much Rain because it, not only because, because it's a little catch for me. It's catchier and Too Much Rain's a little a little slower and kind of like a little forgettable if you listen to it like four or three or four times. But if you listen to it more, you will definitely love it. This the, the songs and you'll know how it goes. Number eleven for me is. Follow me. This song is good, but it's not my favorite on the album because, it, don't get me wrong, this song did have a positive message, but it doesn't really work too much in this album for me. It's 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 a it has a pretty positive message. I like that, but all of, overall, it's not really my favorite song in the album because I mean, don't get me wrong, it's it's catchy, but the lyrics is pretty good. By any means, it's it's what the lyrics and. See, that's another thing about Paul McCartney and, uh, about how he improved after the Beatles Anthology. Because after, in the late 90s, um, after the Beatles Anthology, he starts to write better songs, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, there's some 80s songs that I, I like, but not a lot, because at the time, he makes songs that were a little too poppy for me, especially because I'm into metal music. But don't get me wrong, I do admire some of the pop music. So don't get me wrong, I admire some of them. Like Michael Jackson, I admire him as a musician of King of Pop, man. I love him. And, yeah. This song... Yeah, but this song, Follow Me, it's not really my favorite song of the album, but it's okay the way it is. It's not like it's gonna... It's not like it's gonna hurt anyone for what they're... You know, it's not It's gonna hurt anyone for listening to a song of how bad it is. It's not that. It's, it's, got, a, it's got a good positive message, but overall it doesn't really do much for me. So, yeah. Number 9, or number 10 for me, I almost skipped it already. Number 10 for me, and by the way, I am getting into the good, or better ones for me. Like, I like the other songs that I mentioned. I like the songs before, but I like the other ones way better. So, yeah. Number 10 for me, uh, so we're getting into the good, great, good ones. My number 10 for me is A Certain Softness. This is song is really catchy. And, Love the love his um, vocals and great vocals by Paul McCartney, and pretty good song. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually really, like, a really good song. A certain softness, no, no one did I ever thought this. A certain softness. It's a really good song. I rec I love this song. It's already my favorite. It's it's a good a, a better song for me in my opinion. And now we're not really much to say about the song, but. It's a really good song for me. The song is really great. It grow on me later on. And number nine for me. So now I'm getting into my first. So I'm getting into my first songs on the album. Number nine for me is "At the Mercy." This song is really good. Even though it's slow, I know a lot of people will forget how it goes. But this is the song I actually know how it goes a lot more than what people would know how it goes. Because this song is so catchy. And I love it. it's really slow. And man, this song is really good. At the mercy, at the mercy, at the mercy of busy day. It's such a good song. I love it. It's really good vocals by Paul McCartney. I love it. And again, not really much to say about this song. Really love this song. I really love this song. Number eight for me, Jenny Rain. Jenny Rain. I hope I pronounced this right. The Jenny Rain is, it's similar to his other songs like Blackbird and Bluebird where I mentioned in the review video which um, I'm going to re-upload that um, Paul McCartney album review because it had copyrights and it took down the video. I mean it didn't took down the video but it was copyrighted so I'm going to re-upload it so like yeah. I did mention that um, Paul McCartney's um, Jenny Rain, it's similar to Blackbird and Bluebird where he talks about a bird. Where, cause in blue, uh, in Blackbird is from the Beatles' White album, which I actually do have that album, and 
and another thing, um, Bluebird, I believe it was from um, the album Wings Over America, I believe. And, yeah. This song is very, and he did mention this. Um, oh, no, it's actually from Bl Band on the Run. Okay, I apologize. But I haven't listened to his 70s albums in a while, so forgive me, I forgot what album titles were there. Because there are a bunch of Paul McCartney albums that I didn't buy. I didn't buy away. I didn't buy the albums. I listened to it all online. So I like. I know you're gonna be questioning yourselves. Oh, but if you listen to the songs, like the albums all the way through on on online, how come you want to buy all these CDs? Here's the thing. The reason, the real reason why I want to buy CDs for myself is not just because I just want to just have fun. And, or actually, it is. But most of the times, the reason why I wanted to buy CDs for music is because when you listen to it online, they can interrupt you from experiencing through the albums that you're listening to all the way through. That's why I want to buy CDs like this. Because when you buy CDs like this, it doesn't ruin the lack of like experience that you're going through in one in the particular album. And that's why I buy the CD because when you listen to it online, it just it it lacks. The experience of the album and it ruins, and it ruins the la it ruins the experience and you can't really, I don't know. That's just my opinion. So that's why I buy the CDs because, especially so I don't have no interruptions during the tracks. Even though I do pause it, but at least that if I listen to the next track, at, at least I don't have to, you know, go go and at least I don't have to like you know go and tap to the next song like it could be and it's simple if you buy a cd or even buy a vinyl it's really simple to go through the albums like quicker but for jenny rain it's very similar to blackbird and bluebird and paul mccartney quotes or paul mccartney quotes <laughs> to me it was just something to do with blackbird a written a, a win a wren is one of my favorite birds a little little english bird it's the smallest English bird, and I always feel very privileged to see a to see a wren because they're very shy, and it's just ah so so a combination of all of that. It's a favorite bird to me, and then instead of making it to a bird again like blackbird, only more def de definingly this time I made it a woman, you know, a girl. So it was good fun doing it. That's really good background. I'm not gonna lie, it's actually a really good background. The smallest British birds are actually the fire, the fire crest. Sorry, and the gold and the gold crest. But we can let Paul. Uh, well, yeah, but well, actually, if I actually looked up online, that it's not actually the smallest bird. It's actually um, it's actually fire crest and the gold crest. So they're both actually the smallest British birds. I actually, I mean, I could be wrong, but I actually looked up online and I thought they were the smallest bird. I could be wrong, but. I don't know. But yeah, this song is very similar to the, the Blackbird and the Bluebird, except he says like a woman. But but when you listen to the song with because it has an acoustic guitar in it, you kinda of might as well have wanted to say it sounds like a blackbird, pretty much. Because it with the acoustic guitar too. And yeah. Paul McCartney he explained it a lot in this DVD. Because um, by the way, I did have the special edition for a while recently because I had the Paul McCartney's Chaos Equation in the Backyard on the CD but I didn't have the DVD because I didn't know there was a DVD documentary but I bought it and I decided to give my sister the CD so she can listen to it you know just to get an idea how much I love this album I mean not just that I mean just to you know show her how much I, just to show her not not just because of how much I love Paul McCartney just because I just want to show her how much I love her so if my sister is watching this I love you. I love you. I love you, sister. But yeah, overall, this song, Jenny Rain, is actually a really good song. Um, it ha I love that flute, like a flute solo. Almost in the middle and the end, it's really, like a really good solo from a flute. I think it's a doodock, I think. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's a doodock. Or, or, yeah, I think it's a doodock. Yeah, it's a really good... I love that solo of, of um, I think it was a doodock. I could be wrong. I love I love that solo it's almost in the middle of the end it's really good I love it so yeah number seven for me um, you may rank this really high on your list but number seven for me is fine line this is a really catchy song and really catchy start to the whole entire album because this is the first track on the album and it's a really good song surprisingly it's such a good song really catchy I 
I love it. Although I have to admit it, that the one of the, it was not really a good, not like a hundred percent start, but it's a, a good start. I mean, not a good start, but like a, a proper start to the album. Because have you noticed if you listen closely, you can hear him saying in the background. He says, "There is a long," or he says, "There is a long way between chaos and creation." Like he mentions chaos and creation, but he didn't really mention because this is supposed to be an album opener for the album. And it didn't really start really well for that album, but it's still a really good song. It's catchy. It's really, really listenable. And this is um, a first single from, and this is actually a first single from this album, if you didn't know that. And the lyrics follow a speaker highlighting the fine line between reckless and creation decisions to an enrollment listener, while at the same time regretting his own reckless past decisions. And I love it. And by the way, um, it also, did, if you, I don't think I never mentioned this in the album review, but the song CD single contained two other tracks not featured on the main album, which is Comfort of Love, Growing Up, and also Growing Up, Falling Down. I never listened to these tracks, so maybe in the next video, like not the re-uploaded video, but in the next video I will mention them and see how I really feel about the song. But yeah. So yeah, Paul McCartney actually said in quotes, in quote, it was just the opening line, there's a fine line between recklessness and courage, you know. You'll see some people just go sing why and you think, you'll think that's the way you do it. And sometimes it's, it's just foolish and just reckless, but they say they're being courageous. So that though, so that the thought really was what started me off and I just kind of follow on for, from that idea that you've got to choose which of the two you got you're going to do you know be reckless or courageous so that was lyrically based on that and then I just sat down at at, at the piano and started that kind of chunky thing keeping it very simple and then the little hook sings fine line it's a fine line came so I brought it into the studio in Los Angeles and I was working it working it out and on and um and on that little bit that there's a different riff that goes around the fine line bit and when I was playing that I made a mistake and I went to the wrong bass you know and Nacho goes that's great that's it I went I actually it's a wrong note he said no 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 check it out listen to it oh I see what you mean it didn't. It just didn't go where you expected. It was supposed to be like an F note, and it went to an F. And so that became an, a really interesting little thing. Then I was like, "Oh, okay, that's good. That's that got a little signature originally, originality to it. So that and the words and the tune. Then we then we put then we just put it put that all together." That's a very good um, inspiration background right there. I don't think I lied, that was actually a really good background. Yeah, but all seriously, Paul McCartney is basically telling us how he got the information on how he created this lyrics in the song. And really impressive uh, idea that he would, um, he, especially knowing that he learned the mistakes he did, but he's still fine with it, which is really cool. We all learn from our mistakes. Number six for me is How Kind of You. This is a song that is actually really one of my favorite songs on this album because this is the song on it. If you if you had this special edition, the DVD, you will know exactly because in the main menu. Ah, oh, now I gotta charge this stupid laptop. But on the DVD, you can actually um, hear the in the background How Kind of You song, which I did have it on the album review, but I, but I was gonna take that video down because of how. Um, I was gonna take that video down because of the copyrights. So, yeah. How Kind of You is a really good song, really slow song, I love it. And number five, for me, you may rank this like you may rank this on your top three or top five top fives, but for now this is a really good um for me it's really good to what it is. But number five for me is Friends to Go. This is like the closest song, song we've ever got from a tribute song to Paul McCartney because 
Paul McCartney had an, a background about this song and how, how he got the idea of making this song. Because if you didn't know, at the time, George Harrison passed away in 2001, in November. He passed away in November 2001. I believe it was the 28th. Or no, I probably it's the 25th. But all of that... Oh, wait, hold on one second. God dang it. I always do so much research and all stuff like that. But uh, I'm just kidding. I love doing research just to learn more about it. But George Harrison passed away in November 29th, 2001. And that's sad that he passed away. But he was he was a little older than John Lennon, but he was still pretty young at the time. So Paul McCartney, he was really depressed at the early in the early 2000s, in the mid 2000s, in the late 2000s where he wasn't uh, de depressed anymore. So yeah, he he's gotten better over times of his feelings at the time, but he's getting a little better in learning through it. But yeah, friends to go is something fairly mundane. It was as close as Paul came to writing a tribute to George Harrison. Who has, um, if you didn't know, George Harrison passed away in, uh, in as a, um, a a cause of death, which was a lung cancer, and he was at the age of 58, 57, and it's really sad that he passed away that soon too. At the time, I was, at the time, I wasn't a big fan of George Harrison's music. Don't get me wrong, I love his some of his music because I actually do have an album, George Harrison's album. And it's old things must pass, and I love that album. And I didn't get too much listens because I've been busy for a while. I've been working all day. But yeah, in all serious, I love George Harrison as a guitarist too, and especially because, especially his own albums that he made over the years. And yeah. Okay, so um, Paul's description about the songwriting process. Very. Sometimes describing it as an imperson impersonation of George. Paul McCartney quotes, To me it just started to sound like a George Harrison song. I was just sent down to write. And the feeling of George came over me. And I just kept writing and thinking, George could have written, George could have written, written this. <laughs> and sometimes as if Harrison written the song from beyond the grave. <laughs> Such stupid facts. But I, Paul McCartney again, quote, I just got this feeling that this is George. So it was like I was writing, I was like George writing one of his songs. So I just wrote it. It just wrote itself very easily because it wasn't even me writing it. Wow, that's crazy. It's actually a crazy um, thing that he had to, that's pretty crazy. That when it's, when they're close, that's pretty crazy and crazy that... If a, if a person that you're really into and are nearly like in touch of you, that when, when later on when a person has passed away, then you can get the feeling of him going into you. You can feel it. It happened to me, dude. I mean, not because of my family, uh, not because of my family members passed away, but it's, it's been like that. I, I've experienced that before. It's crazy. I'm not crazy bad, but crazy good. Like crazy, like, I mean crazy. But number five, like number five, this is such a this song for me. It's really good song. I'm not gonna lie. Even though if it's like a song that he wrote, George Harrison would have wrote in this. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm I don't, I'm not picking on George Harrison. I love him as a musician, and especially All Things Must Pass is one of my favorite albums from George Harrison. I need to start listening to his other albums that he made over the years. And number four, or no, actually, yeah, number four, number four. This is one of my favorite songs on this album. We're getting to the so for the top five list are by, so on the top five list, those are all my favorite songs on the albums already. Like by far my favorite songs on the album. So number four for me is "Promise to You, Girl." This song, so catchy, and so like great harmonies into it too. I love the melodies in it too, because I love that in the beginning it goes a little slow. It goes a little slow at the beginning, but then later on it goes it goes. Like a more upbeat, and I love the tempo changes. I love it, and I love that, like the the bridge too. I love it where it's just, it's just like like the sun that rises every day. We can use it to chase the clouds from the sky, like something like that. But it's so good. I love the melodies in it too. I love it, and I love that, like the melodies in it too. And I love that. None, like I love that none, 
lyrics. Like at the part after you were jamming out, it goes a little slower again. I love it where it's just like, Ooh. that was like probably my favorite part of the song. I love the song. It's already my, it's already my, it's always my favorite song of this album. And yeah, and I also, and I forgot to show you, and. And yes, I got George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, just to let you know. I love this album. And don't get me wrong, there's some songs that I forgot how it goes, but I haven't been getting this album a lot more listens. But I will give it a little more listens after this. And maybe later on I'll do my album, um, not only my album ranking video, but I might, I will may do an album review on, the, um, on this album. So, yeah. This song, Promise to You Girl, is one of my favorite songs on this album. We're already getting it. So the next ones are my top three favorite songs on this album. Number three for me is English Tea. This song is so good. I love the orchestra. I love the orche orchestration in this song. I love it. I love that at the beginning you can hear like the instruments. Like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. And I love that opening lyrics. Just like, would you care to sit with me? Have an English tea. On a Sunday morning. I love that lyrics. I love his vocals. Like this song is one of my favorite songs on this album. It's so good. And it's really like pretty upbeat, but it's more like an orchestra. Like it's something like you would hear like in really early times, like in the like you would hear it in the orchestra orchestra era. But yeah, this song is definitely my favorite song in this album. And I got chills from listening to that song too. I got chills from listening to that song. Every time I listen to this song, I always get the chills. Because of how good it is. Number two, you may... So number two and number one, love these songs. Don't have no problems with these songs. Like my top five, those are the songs I have no problems with. I love those songs. The top five. So number two for me is Writing to Vanity Fair. I love this song. I love that toy. I love that Paul McCartney was playing that... Um, the toy, got, uh, I forgot what was that instrument called, but he was playing like a toy, and it's not the whole entire song, but you can hear it in the background, but I love it. This song, I got chills from listening to that song too. This album is just so good. It could be just me, but I love this song, album so much. And it's, he played a toy, Godspeed, and, or, God dang, Glock, Glock and Spill. No, he played, um, Paul McCartney played the toy, Glock Spin, or Glock and Spill. That's the instrument he played. The toy, and it's beautiful. I love that beautiful instrument he played in the background. And I also love this album cover of Paul McCartney's Chaos and Creation in the background. I love this album cover too. And this, like this, I gotta say, this album is, or like, hands down one of my favorite albums from Paul McCartney he's ever released over the years. And this song, Right Into Vanity Fair, it's such a good song. It's really listenable. Especially when I first listened to the song, I was like, man, this song is such a good song. It's really such a good song. The third the third like the third time I listened to the song, I started getting chills of how much this song is really good. And number one is what I consider my favorite song on this album and will always be. And it's anyway. The final track on this album. It's so I love the his vocals. I love the melodies on it. And hands down, this is my favorite song in this album. Even though if I did say there's other songs that are my favorite songs on the album, but this is what takes the cake. And this song, I love the melodies. It's just so good. It, you know, it kind of, it kind of, when I listen to this album, it kind of reminds me of Queen, where Freddie Mercury was mastering of melodies. Don't get me wrong, because um, I know you're gonna be asking me in the comments down below, what do I really think about Queen? I actually like. Queen, Queens are one, Queen are I would say they're a really one of the kind, really good band. At the, I'm, I don't, I know you're like, what? What do you mean by good? Don't you mean your favorite? What's wrong with them? I don't have problems with Freddie Mercury or Queen. I love Queen. I like. There's actually one of my, my favorite songs from Queen has got to be "Don't Stop Me Now." It's one of my favorite songs. It's catchy, and especially I got that song from that movie Shaun of the Dead. I love that movie, and. Yeah, the way they use the song Queen Don't Stop Me Now and Sean's Dead, they it matches, it mixes so well to it in the movie too. Sean of the Dead is hands down one of my favorite horror movies to date. And not only that, one of my favorite movies regardless of zombies too. And yeah, it's a little off topic, but Queen is one of my 
I would say it's one of the kind, one of a, a good band. I, I don't really listen to Queen that much. Don't, I'm not, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I, I actually do like Queen. One problem, and believe me or not, I don't have problems with Queen or Freddie Mercury. I have no problems with the band members either. But the problem is I have is that they overplay their songs to death, I have to say. Don't get me wrong. I like their songs. I like their songs. Like, Another Bites the Dust, but Honey Rush Video, I really love their songs. Like, it's instantly one of my favorite songs on Queen. And I'm not just like the other fans saying, oh, this is one of my favorite songs because just what they say. No, it's not that. The reason why I love Bohemian Rhapsody song is because of the changes, the tempo changes. They had um, a piano breakdown in it, and I love the guitar solo. I love the drums. Dude, everything about this song is one of my favorite parts. Of, one of my favorite songs on this um, Funk Queen, sorry. And that's another, uh, and We Will Rock You. This is a, that song, We Will Rock You, is a good song, but the one problem I have is that they overplay the song to death. Don't get me wrong, I like the song. But it gets me amped up every time I hear the song, but the problem is that they overplay the song to death. Don't get me wrong. This song, I love, I like this song. I, I would say I like this song for now. I don't love, I mean, I don't have problems with the song, but I, I love that guitar solo too. Oh my gosh, Queen is so not only good at making melodies, but they're good at guitar solos too. Even though if it, they're not really my favorite, like, even though if they're not really my favorite, like, I would say Brian May is not really my favorite guitar player. Don't get me wrong, he's a good guitar player. I would prefer um, Jimmy Page over him because his guitar solos hands up, are probably more of my favorite guitar solos in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I love Brian May's guitars, riffs, and his solos. And yeah, uh, my top favorite Queen songs, if you're going to be asking me, I'll, number one for me might probably be Don't Stop Me Now because it's catchy and it's, I feel like that song is a little, a, pretty underrated for me. Number two for me, it's, I would say, a Bohem Bohemian Rhapsody song. Number three for me, I'll, uh, that's a tough choice, I'll say number three. Number three, I'll say Bicycle Race. And I love that song too. I, my, Bicycle Race is my number three favorite. Number one for me is Don't Stop Me Now, cause, especially because hearing it from Shot of the Dead. But that's really off side track, I apologize. But the melodies in this album kind of reminds me of Queen a little bit. But yeah, in a way, this song is so catchy. I love the melodies, I love... The vocals for Paul McCartney, everything about this song is really good. And I prefer that as my top favorite, like my number one favorite song, mostly because of it. And by the way, fun fact, if you didn't know this, anyway, the last track on the uh, album, anyway, also includes a hit track. And it's I've Only Got Two Hands. And I love that instrumental because there's no vocals. Because, like I said, hidden tracks, in hidden tracks, there's not really much, there's no vocals for the most part. They're mostly instrumental parts, and I love it. That's. Most of the parts I ranked them number one, like the last song is on the album because of the hidden tracks in it. But most of the parts I put it because no number one because of how good they are too, like the song, like anyway, a day in the life from the Beatles, such a perfect little house club band. I love that song so much. The vocals, the harmonies, everything about the song is good. I love that the hidden track too, and yeah, this song I love that hidden track too. That I've only got two hands, really good hidden track too. So throughout the whole entire outro for this video, I'm gonna just basically want to show you what this album looked like. So please excuse me if it took for, uh, it took me a, a while to go through this, but that's what's called doing. Um, I, w I forgot how you would say it. doing a unboxing. I mean not unboxing, but like showing you what this album looks like. So if you, cause I this is how you open up this album. You put it in. Oh, okay, there you go. There's a, a little hole that you can put it there. So just for keep safe keeper, or just for see, safe measurements, and at the back is you know the I'll put it on focus because I know you gotta be wondering yourself are you gonna put it in focus? Yes, I will. Don't worry, all right? Because I know a lot of because I know my other previous videos they had a lot more like um I mean I would say not the worst quality but mostly for the most um unfocused parts of the videos I'm not trying to make a pun or anything but this is what happens when you open this um, album and yes I got the special edition so if you see it like one that says two disc that's a special edition but in the but in the CD you just have like a blank a blank a blank you know yellow part like in the part right here you'll just get you basically will get the blank part and no two discs you know what I mean but when you flip it over um, when you flip it over like this it has a DVD on um, it has a DVD right over here. And have you noticed, guys and girls? Have you guys and girls noticed that if 
if you turn this CD around, let me show you how it looks like. If you turn this around, look what happens. It's like it's his name again. Look at this. And I'm not I'm not joking, but that's what exactly what happens when you switch the CD. If you play with the CD and you, you if you go around like if you go around like this, it still says his name. That's crazy. That's how talented he is. I mean, mostly it's because of his name because he has the two C's in Paul McCartney. But I love it. And this, again, I said this before, but this is one of my favorite album covers from Paul McCartney. And by the way, this is um, a photograph um, taken in 1958, and he was really young. This was before the Beatles, by the way. This is before he was popular at the time. And by the way, there's fun facts about this album background, too, again. In the making of this album, in the making of this album, he actually originally wanted to call it, and this was, by the way, it was taken by his brother, Mike McCartney. And the camera, you know, the picture he took him from uh, Mike McCartney. And this title was originally t titled Paul Under Washing, stuff like that. And before, and, and, and the second uh, title he wanted to create was um, Our Kids Through Mom's Neck Curtains. And finally, he renames it Chaos and Cushion in the Backyard. So, yeah. I do not have problems with none of the names and what would happen if, if, it, were, if it was a, an album. I would not have no problems with that. I love it. In the first page, we got a drawing of him, Sir Paul McCartney. It's really beautiful, too. I love that drawing. That's something I loved about this album. I love his, the, his drawings, too, in the album. So, this is the first page. And this is the next, or uh, well, yeah, this is the next pitch, our next page. Another drawing. I actually, because it's more like a pencil style drawing. I love it. I love the drawings from this album. It's like something you would see at a, um, I don't know how you say, like something you would draw, like if you just, if you're bored, you would do, you would just basically want to draw something. That's what I used to do back in the day. I used to draw for some stuff. I'm not the best artist around, so I'm not the best artist. Just to let you know. I'm not trying to make fun of myself, but seriously, I'm not the best artist. So, yeah. We're getting to this pretty fast. So, yeah. Another drawing, which I don't have no problems with this drawing. It looks really good. I'm not going to lie. Just put it on focus so you can see very well. Okay. Next page. Next page. Okay. Put it more on focus. So, sorry if it's a little quiet. Because I'm just, you know, basically showing you the, what the pages looks like. Not just because of YouTube's policy. It's basically because, you know, just to, you know, show you what the album looks like. The picture when you open it up. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost at almost the last page. This is a picture I don't think it was on the original. I don't think the picture was originally in the CD. I could be wrong. But, yep. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. One la this is the last page. Him him grabbing a, a ball. A marble ball. A marble, I think. I could be wrong. But, but it kind of looks like he's going like this. Or like this. <laughs> oh, it's so funny of him seeing him doing like this. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's just for me. It's all. It's funny for me. I don't know. So yeah, final page. This is. This was not in the original CD, by the way. This word right here. This is not the original. Um, this wasn't. They didn't. This didn't show up in the original. So yeah, this was the final page. This is the back. Paul McCartney looking really healthy at the time too. He looks real in really good health too. Cause this was pay, This was. Um, I think it was this was during in the live. I could be wrong. This was pick, taking a picture in the live. I could be wrong. Where he was performing live. But this. And he was playing on the piano. You know him singing a song. What was he singing? One of the songs from this album. I could be wrong. But yeah that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I had to show you about this book. It looks really talented. It looks really good. I'm not going to lie. This, this album cover is really good. Like This album cover is one of my favorites. I would put, I would basically want might want to put this number one on my list for Paul McCartney um, album covers for me. 
Uh, yeah. Let me just get a little close up so if you guys can see like the CD. I think in the CD, I think the CD and DVD kind of has the same thing. Oh no, it does it actually. No, 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 no. Because in the DVD, not only because it says DVD, but it has like a different text in the bottom. So yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, fun fact that um, like you see in the bottom it says Chaos of Creation in the backyard, but when you turn it over around, it still says Chaos of Creation in the backyard. That's really talented. That's another thing I wish many people would look more into, like, because I know a lot of people love uh, know Paul McCartney and love him, but if they got this album for themselves and they didn't, they didn't really give. Oh, hold on one second. They didn't give this album a chance, but if they didn't give this album a chance, but give up on it, just give it more listens. Just give it more. Like I would say, like, if you listen to the the first time you listen to this album, you're like, mm, it's okay. I didn't. I, I like the songs. But it's kind of forgettable for me. But if you, it, that's okay. I can accept that as long as you don't, you know, bash this artist, you know. And if you just give it like five or, or six listens all the way through, and try to best to remember how it goes, and then later on you will definitely love this album. Cause me, I've always fell in love with this album. It's such a good album, Paul, Paul McCartney. Oh yeah, by the way, Paul McCartney, um, friends to go song. The Friends to Go song, this was a, a, another tribute to George Harrison again. It's similar to Paul McCartney's Driving Rain album where uh, where he was tribute to George Harrison with the sitar instrument in it, but it didn't really talk much about George Harrison, how much we met, talked about, because the song was called Riding Into a Job Poor, and Riding Into a Job Poor, it's, it, it's a song that basically, in the lyrics, he's, it's a pretty simple lyrics, it's him saying, Riding into a job poor, riding through the night, riding with my baby. Oh, what a night, what a night it is. And it repeats a bunch of times. I don't have a problem with that. But it's mainly an instrumental music. Similar to like the song Heather. It's basically more of an instrumental um, song in it. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this in the Paul McCartney's, um, Paul McCartney's Drive Me Raid album that there was actually a music video for Your Loving Flame and From a Lover to a Friend if you didn't know that. I looked up online for songs, or the songs that has like music videos in this album, and it did, it actually had two music videos. For for Your Loving Flame, I actually love that music video, Your Loving Flame, I love that music video too. And From a Lover to a Friend, it's basically him just going to his studios and you know, basically showing us how he recorded that song, Your Loving, or From a Lover to a Friend. And yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Yeah, Love and Flame is a really good music video. It's actually a pretty good music video. I know many people out there will say, Oh, watching the Your Love and Flame music video looks pretty dated. Like, don't, like, don't. Like, I know, I know it could be, I, I, I know it could be dated at the time where this, he made a music video, but truth to be told that he actually aired this music video of Your Love and Flame in the show. I think it was Tonight Show. And he, because he wanted to um, show a music video. And this, was at the time he was dating Heather Mills, one of my arch ne one of my arch nemesis of a of a wife that's married to one of my favorite singers. She's like I would say she's like Lisa Marley Priestley. She's like Lisa Mary Priestley who married who fake married Michael Jackson in the nineties because they both married. The one one thing they both got in common is that they both married them for the money, not married them for. How much of how much they loved them, but they married them for the money. That's depressing. But to be fair, Lisa Marie Priestley, I'm not trying to compare it to the other, but the wives. But seriously, she did it. She barely even married Michael Jackson. She, I think, she married him for like a year or two. I don't even remember. But Paul, for Paul McCartney and Heather Mills, they they married each other for, I would say for six years so that's a little longer than Lisa Mary Priestley but it's still not because especially because at the time and by the way the recording of Paul McCartney's Chaos City Creation this was still at the time he was dating he was married he was fake married to Heather Mills at the time so yeah this was still at in the Chaos City Creation in the backyard this was still at the time he was he was he still fake married to Lisa uh, Heather Mills not Lisa Mary Priestley has a mills and that's messed up. He had to go through this. But to be fair, even though Paul McCartney would not like his songs from the early 2000s, especially knowing that he dedicated to Heather Mills, 
But to be fair, I would rather listen to the songs that he dedicated to Heather Mills over any of the music that we even want to hear today. But for another comparison, I'm not comparison, but like, there's another song, and it's from a Ringo Rama album, and he actually, a, a hit song from this album was Never Without You, Never Without You. It's definitely a tribute to George Shares' song. And I know you may not probably like this song, but give it a chance. Let's just give it, like I said, give it more listen to you. It may change your mind later on. You, you may be a little too hard on the album. Yeah, I know this album's a little country music. Don't get me wrong. I, country music is probably one of my least favorite genre of music. I don't hate that genre, but it's a pretty good genre for what it is. But Never With Value is definitely a tribute to George Harrison. It even mentions some of his George Harrison's songs and even albums in the lyrics. Like, here comes the song, here comes the song about you, within you, without you, all things must pass. I know all things must pass, that's part of the lyrics. But this, I definitely prefer, I definitely prefer this song, Never Without You, as a tribute, as George shares it. I know a lot of people say, oh, I, I love this song, Never Without You, because it's a popular hit song, and I love the song. I love this song, the reason why, the real reason why is because it's a tribute to George shares it. Not just because it's a hit. But the reason, the real reason why I love the song is because it's because it's, it's a real, it's a tribute to George Harrison, and I love it. I love that guitar solo by Eric Clapton, by the way. But to be fair, Paul McCartney's um, Freedom song, I know you may have. Um, um, I'm I'm gonna um, do a link in the description if you want to check out this album ranking video and um, album ranking and a review of this video. Of the Paul McCartney's Driving Rain album. I actually love this album. It's actually one of my favorite albums. I know a lot of people will be like, what? This is a pretty bad album. Like, just give it more listens. Just give it more listens. Like I said, sure, listening to their solo albums can be pretty hard to get into it, but if you listen to it more and more, the more you will love it. Like they say, the more you watch it or the more you listen to the albums, the more, the better it, the better it gets. That's what, that's what we always say. But this album, a lot of people, um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell, um, I'll tell them what my ranking of this, um, cause there, if you probably didn't know this, but Paul McCartney did a, a Freedom song. It's a hit track from this album, and it, it features Eric Clapton as, in the guitar solo, which is technically, in my opinion, not my favorite guitar solo from Eric Clapton. Don't get me wrong, he has good guitar solos back then, but me in this song, not my favorite guitar solo from Eric Clapton. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I don't hate it. I like, I like it, but it's not my favorite. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, what do you think about Paul McCartney's Chaos Equation in the backyard? Did you, and by the way, tell me in the comments down below, what did you think? Um, did you, did you agree with me with the album, um, my ranking? If you don't, then that's okay. <laughs> but, um, let me know what would you rank them your least favorite to favorite, like what we or worst to best. Like I say, no worst to best. There's no bad songs for me. For me, there's no bad songs on this album, or even Paul McCartney Driving Rain or Ringo Rama. I mean, even though it was Ringo Rama, I had some songs that I didn't like too much, but I didn't give them that much listens. But for, for Paul McCartney Driving Rain album, I have no bad songs on that album because I listen to it a lot, especially because that, especially because Paul McCartney's Driving Rain album it relates to me for some weird reasons. That this album, it relates to me. Because, like, for example, songs like Lonely Road, songs like... Like, any songs on that album, it relates to me. Like, Back in the Sunshine Again. See, th those songs are really relatable to somebody. I guess that's why we love the certain genres in music. And why we grasp on to certain albums. Is that it grabs your attention. And not only that, but it, it pulls you in of how much it relates to you. You're just like, man, it relates to me how much I love it. And he's been there and I've been there. So yeah, let me know what you think. If you had to rank your um, uh, least favorite to favorite tracks on Paul McCartney's Chaos Equation in the Backyard, what would it be? Um, if you guys and girls enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, share, share this video with your friends or family. And also, um, Paul McCartney's um, uh, Drive a Great album, the ranking and the review. Links are in the description. And um, by the way, I did the Ringo Rama's review and the album ranking. I did both of those. So yeah, I'm done. Well, I mean, so far I'm done um, ta um, handle, uh, talking about this album for now. If I have other things to talk about about these albums, I will later on. And similar to like, yeah.
Paul McCartney's Driving Rain, a chaos occasion in the backyard are one of my favorite albums from Paul McCartney, especially after the breakup of the Beatles, one of my my number one favorite band of all times. If you if you disagree with me with the number one, if you disagree with me for the Beatles number um if you disagree the Beatles are not the number one favorite band in the world, you you're wrong. I don't like you. But yeah. My social media are in the description so you can follow me there and uh, oh yeah, like subs um if you guys enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share this video with your friends and family, tap the bell for notifications so you can be notified direct directly to that video. My social media are in the description and I will see you in the next video. Change the world. Peace and love.